Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Skinny Dip Podcast. Happy to have you back with us this week. Hello, Hi, friends. Brian. Hi, friends. Hi, friends. Hi, Nay. Hi, everyone. Hello. I, I Hello. Hi. I. We haven't I spoken in a while. I know. Well, Did you feel like I was ignoring you this weekend? No, I don't think I felt like you were ignoring me, but... Mm-hmm. You know, I will say it's very evident, I think, with both of us when we are in a place to not speak. When we need our time. (laughs) When we need our time. I don't know if that's just because we are in constant communication all the time. So we just inherently have this like weird tone to our voices when we're over speaking for the moment. Yeah. But no, I didn't really miss you because I knew she's like the play. Like, you'll come back, you know? Like, (laughs) she's just... She's like a healthy plague. Like, like you know, seaweed, like, it'll circle around you for a minute and she'll come right on back. The seaweed came back. So I knew she'd be back eventually. <laughs> oh, yeah. But this it was just, like, a good weekend to just yeah, meander. Take a, take a moment. Like, sometimes you just need, like, a little reset, you know? Totally. 100%. So um, that was my vibe. Well, yeah. I'm, I, I'm glad I wasn't near you for that vibe. No. Yesterday was – it was it was one of those days where you – you know what? You'll organize like one drawer or a, a closet, and then it's like, okay, I'm the whole house is getting oh, ripped, yes. ripped through. That's how it starts. It starts with like that <laughs> one junk drawer, and then you're like, wait, this stamp doesn't belong in this junk drawer, and then yeah. somehow the stamp ends up in the closet in the bucket. Like, it, yeah, yeah, full circle of it. It was that was me yesterday. I think I it was just. It was it was chaotic. It was chaos, but it's you always unplan for that to happen too. It's never like it just happens. You just start and then, yep, Rome just starts to burn. Ugh. Um, I had the most random thing happen to me the the other morning, and you know, when just like things happen to you, and you think of it like, okay, this is just of course this would happen to me. Mm-hmm. So I was making a pancake. In the waffle maker. So whatever. Maybe it's a waffle. I don't know. It would be a waffle, I guess. Uh, I don't understand the difference between a pancake and a waffle to begin with, but whatever. So Yeah, because sometimes they have different ingredients. Like, the, it, I don't know. Maybe a waffle. Because if you if you buy a mix, like, it will say, like, this is what you do to make waffles. This is what you do to make Oh, does pancakes. it say that? I don't even know. Oh, okay. I should look Sometimes there'll be, like, a little bit of, like, maybe waffles have more oil. I don't know. I, I know oh. that they're, yeah. Okay. I, so I just buy the mix, a simple milk just- mix. And I think it says pancake and I put in the waffle maker. And to my mind, it's a pancake waffle. It's a waffle, yeah. It's whatever it is. (laughs) So I was making one and I used the last of the batter, whatever the mix. And so I put too much water in it. And so essentially when I was pouring it into the waffle maker, Tara was like, you're making a crepe. Because that's how thin it was. It wasn't really a waffle. It was like a crepe at that point. It was very thin. (laughs) So I didn't realize that I put too much of the thin water in. So I close the lid. It starts overflowing, right? Yeah. And me being the person I am, I can't just let it overflow. So I grab a paper towel and I'm trying to wipe the edges of the Did you waffle pan. So yeah, so I wiped the edges and it got really hot. I don't know why I thought it would be cold. Searing waffle maker, why I thought it'd be cold. A piece of the batter flew off the paper towel and landed on the back side of my arm and seared me. So I now have a crescent shaped moon burn on the back of my left I dare I say bicep, like that area. And it just and I had some on my hand so I couldn't wipe it off right away. So Thank I was standing God there it didn't go in your eye. De- but like what are the odds a flying piece of pancake batter? hit me in the back of the arm and I couldn't, I couldn't wipe it. So I just felt it searing my skin like a, like a cattle being branded with this pancake batter, this crepe I made. And this I was like, is, why? why? This is just a lesson on safety. Know, yeah, safety for sure. We, all, we have those always. <laughs> but just, you know, let things – if it's gonna, if it, if that's, if that's the destiny of your pancake mix, if it was gonna just get everywhere, just let it get everywhere, you know. Right. And then- just like let it go. Like, why did I have to? Why did I have to think I needed to tackle it right then? So just let this be your lesson. Uh, Sometimes it's okay to just let it overflow because I now am branded with Simple Mills's almond flour batter pancake, pancake mix, crescent wow. moon shaped. If you need me. Oh <sighs> yeah, I know it's a vibe. Yeah. Um, are you gonna hit us with your recommendation first, or shall I go first? You go first. Okay. 
Oh, sorry. My family is – okay. So this is a total side note. My family is mm-hmm. blowing up our group chat because there's a spider web right in front of the brain camera. And so we all got like 60 notifications last night about this spider. Could, could you just see the spider going back? Yes. And like, oh, that's terrifying. Yeah. And so my mom just texted us. She's like, I got 30 stupid videos, 30 stupid notifications about this spider last night. <laughs> I'm like, well, why did – you guys were home. Why don't you just go outside and you knock it out? Room. Yeah, right. Exactly. Just take care of it. Um, okay. So my recommendation for this week is I have a show and tell. Yeah. Okay. It's the Drift Sleep Strips. Okay. I'm really interested. What is this? So – I hate the fact that I'm exposing myself like this. It probably is making me more unmarketable than I'm already making myself on the dating <sighs> scene. Um, but this is if you breathe through your mouth at night, you put it on and it guides you essentially to breathe through your nose, which apparently breathing through your nose when you're sleeping helps you sleep better, helps your digestion, helps your like dental hygiene like yeah. overall you should be sleeping breathing through your nose i guess i don't how I do you start know off, that you don't i uh abigail told me one <laughs> she just creeps at me when i'm sleeping um but no i i know i start off with my mouth closed so i don't know if like something happens in the middle of the night i go to talk yeah. to someone i don't know what happens something happens that i just i just don't so they look like this they look like wow. these little mouth one side is soft and the other side is adhesive and you just like put them on like this <laughs> and you've been is that comfortable yeah it actually so the first night i thought i was gonna accident like rip it off but i've been using them for the past like four nights this is new okay yeah, I just no no this. but th- i find this very interesting so i they are pretty comfortable the only thing i will say is i put chapstick on before i go to bed and you can't really okay. put chapstick on because it won't adhere oh. so that's the only discomfort for me but i do feel like I am sleeping a little bit more soundly for some reason. Apparently, it takes like a while, obviously, to retrain yourself. Um, and I have two functioning nostrils, so I don't, I don't know why I'm choosing to open my mouth like a alligator in the night, but I am. So, and this whole thing costs. There are thirty strips, sh- sleep strips. Wow, uh-huh. that'll really get you if you're not paying attention. <laughs> um, and it was twenty five dollars. Yeah, where did you find those? So I actually found it um, – one of the fitness girls I follow, she was like okay. undoing an unboxing uh, – her Amazon unboxing found these. I think you can buy them on Amazon. They were out on Amazon, so I just went directly to the website. Oh, okay. But yeah, on the on the back it says, decreases snoring and dry mouth, enhances dental hygiene, boosts energy during the daytime, sleep more deeply. Wow. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know. So I'm going to give this a whirl for 30 days. I think I used like four – like five of them already. Okay. Um, and I wonder if I get to like a level of Mecca if I don't need to use them anymore. Yeah, circle back when you're done with them because I'm I'm intrigued. I don't – I mean, Alex has told me I'm a very quiet sleeper, so I'm going to assume that maybe that means I'm breathing through my nose. I don't I don't know. Probably. But, um, I, I honestly go so deep into sleep. It's almost like comatosis. So mm. I need to almost have something that's going to make me not sleep so deep because I am just so sleepy all the time. Interesting. So maybe you should be a mouth breather. Just kidding. Don't maybe, be a mouth maybe breather. Maybe I should pick it up. <laughs> I don't um, know how you you become one or the other. I really don't understand. I don't know. But I, I, I've, I've seen – I've heard of this before. So mm-hmm. that's it's very intriguing. Yeah, it's very intriguing. I so, mean, it's, it's kind of funny too looking at when you put it on, but we'll see. I guess I just – I feel like I only – recommend acne treatments on this well you're in your acne era i hate to say that but you're a acne well, loving runner girl this is really this is really helping so okay because tiktok knows who i am and knows right. that i sweat and i have acne right this girl came up on my talk and she was like, if you sweat a lot and you get you, it's not even sometimes acne i know we've talked about this before it's just like those little bumps what the are plugs. they called? Comedones or something like that? Yeah, like, it's yeah, it's like the clear plug. Okay, yeah, I hate the word plug, but it is a plug. It's like a white. It's like a white yeah. head. Like so, I'll get those like on my chin, and it's just like bumpy. It's textured, and mm-hmm. she was literally like describing my skin exactly. <laughs> and she was like, "You need to get this," and I was like, "Okay, we'll be buying it." It was five dollars from Amazon. Oh, and it's a um acne treatment ointment, and you kind of put it on the area like a mask. Mm-hmm. 
So you put it on for 10 minutes and it's a sulfur treatment. So I didn't realize that sulfur is another type of charcoal. No. Like, oh. What is sulfur? Like an enzyme? Whatever it is. Something. Yeah. Um, I don't want to say chemical. Maybe it is kind of a chemical, but it's also really good for acne. Like, you know, you have like the salicylic acid is supposed to be mm-hmm. good for it. Like sulfur is another treatment. So this okay. is a, this is a sulfur acne treatment. It just looks like this. It's kind of like oh, okay. a off cream, off yellow. It has like no smell. It almost smells a little weird, a little funky, but well, sulfur. sulfur. Does, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, but really works well. Like, mm. I've been using it. Is it a uh, daily thing? Yeah, you're supposed to do it daily. I haven't okay. used it in a couple of days, but um, I was just kind of putting it on for 10 minutes before my skincare and then cleansing it off afterwards and... I'm seeing some changes. So this is Oh, this that's is fantastic. A recommendation for me and it's only $5. Yeah, that's wild. So come on, from I, Amazon. I wonder I wonder if the ingredients are solely sulfur. It says, it says 10% sulfur. I don't know what the other ingredients are. Sorry, I don't even know if I said what it is. It's I don't called, think you did either. I didn't. Wow. No. It's called De La Cruz. De La she Cruz fancy. acne treatment. Obviously, we link our recommendations. Yeah, but- we'll link it for you guys. So how do you think it's working? You think your plugs are just popping out of a socket? Yeah, it just wow, looks like fantastic. it just looks really smooth in this okay. area. Um, and I, I I have some other products I've been using too, and I'm gonna wait to to uh, recommend those. But this is the one I I just as soon as she talked about it on TikTok, I was like, oh, I'm ordering. I'm that. purchasing it. Yeah, you know when you see something on TikTok and you're just like, okay, this is this is for me. Like this, yeah. the sleep strips. You know, your acne balm. Like this is. This is for us. This, when you know you have a problem, like just embrace it because this is for us. Yeah. yeah. Oh, polyethylene glycol. That's sure. what an inactive ingredient is. I don't. I don't understand. Whatever. It, I. That sounds fantastic. I don't have acne currently, but I would really love to give that a whirl for sure. It just like and it's easy just to keep it. Like if yeah. in case you need to just have a little, just because of the amount of like. So it, soot and sweat and whatever is going on so yeah. it really it really helps kind of break that up so okay recommend do you think that your acne is going to go away after you, you're stopping your running girl era or do you think like you're just unfortunately one of those people who always is going to suffer with acne i know it's a very triggering question for you i'm just curious i don't know i mean i was trying to think about it like before i started the running journey and i was like i definitely would have your run of the mill uh, yeah like once once in a while pimple like during the time of the month or whatever, but Mm -hmm. I don't know. Unfortunately, I think I've caught the bug. So of this, because (laughs) what are you going to do? You know, what are you going to do? Just lean into it. (laughs) I started to look, looking into like triathlon clubs. So I don't, Oh, I don't want to lean into that. I thought you were leading into the acne. Oh, we're leaning into the athleisure. Okay. Yeah. There's going to be more hobbies, like even after this is gone done. So I just don't think that, I think I just have to find the right tools that are going to fix it while I'm continuing this active lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And like maybe other friends. Because I don't know. I <laughs> respectfully don't know if I could deal with a, a triathlon after well, the marathon. It's a lot for the supporting people around you. I know. Well, I don't – you know I don't talk about it too much with you. I but know. I know. Let me just say this though because so I ran – 13 miles on Saturday. It was. I had a feeling it was a lot. It was the worst run I've ever had in my entire life. I had like four mental breakdowns. Oh no. Um, I, I think it was just really, it was, there was just, it was just really bad. And I had run 12 miles, like two weeks prior to that Mm -hmm. in North Carolina. And I felt amazing. Like I literally felt like I could have done it I could have kept, like, I could have done another 12 miles. Like, that's how amazing I felt. So it's just crazy that, like, two weeks later, I don't know if it's, like, the 20-degree temperature difference, you know, that could have played into it. But Alex actually biked next to me for Mm. eight of the 13 miles, bless his heart. And, I mean, I just was – I don't know if I'll – I was thinking, I was like, am I leaning into his energy that he's here I don't know how to explain that. Like almost like he's a comfort. He's a comfort. Yeah, a comfort animal. Like he's a, a stuffed animal. Like yeah, for he's, you. Like, he's like he's like my secure my mm-hmm. security blanket. So I feel like sometimes, even I'll like so even when I go on planes and I'm with him, I feel like I'm more nervous 
in a way. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it. No, like, that makes I'm, sense. I, I'm more able to like feel like I can like not hide my emotions. Mm-hmm. Whereas if I'm flying by myself, I don't want to look like a psychopath next to the person. So I have Fair. to really like pocket it. Right. So I felt like having him there was almost a – it was like a crutch that I just mm. – Anyway, okay. I mean, it was really nice of him. I didn't tell him that, but he he also doesn't really listen to the podcast, so I don't think he'll hear me say that. <laughs> um, but I'm supposed okay. to – well, I'm not supposed to. I am running 15 miles this coming weekend, and I just mm. – it's just a lot, you guys. It's, it's really – If you don't have a, men- a menti B in the middle of change, then you're not doing it right. Yeah, so. No. Four mental breakdowns. Literally, yeah, that's fine. That's okay. Brian like had to sit down, like f- almost fetal position in the ground, like on the sidewalk. Like that's how broken. I'm trying really hard I was. not to laugh. It was so bad. I'm it so was, sorry for you. It was so 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 bad. I was like, oh my god, if the marathon goes anything like this, like I don't know. I, I, You're I, gonna I, be fine. You're gonna be fine. Everyone has mental breakdowns in the middle of something. Like you know, Shannon's having a mental breakdown with her move. You're having a mental breakdown with your. Run. Everyone has. Men- menti bees as people are calling it like in the that. middle of change so it's okay the field position maybe it's a little much but it's well, okay i was it's okay. i was just sitting on th- like on the ground in the like in the gravel just like body slumped over just i mean i looked like i went for a swim i was mm. so destroyed i i yeah. canceled soul cycle yesterday i was like i'm not going there's no way i was wow. like absolutely no way I'm, I'm not sore thank god but i just yeah. I, I slept for two hours after it it was just it's bad. Right. It's it okay. Bad. It's okay. It's going to be worth in the end when you check that off your bucket list. Yeah. For sure. God. Um, so I'm going to go out on a limb and say we're not going to add the marathon to our topic today because today we are – we're – is it exposing our dirty laundry? I don't know what it is. We're, we're giving you guys our top mistakes and what we learned from them because I think – Thus far – that's far right. I mean, we're still pretty we're still pretty new into our lives here. Um, I think the more we own our mistakes, quote unquote, the better we feel about them. I also get weird about the word mistake because I feel like mistake also is tied with regret. Mm-hmm. And I feel like when you live in a place of regret, nothing good comes of it. Nothing good comes of it. Yeah, I would say that I mean, at least I think mistakes for me personally, I think you can have a mistake and still not regret it. True. I agree with that. You know, because you can like learn from it or whatever. Agreed. And I, I mean, I don't like to – I definitely – you know when people are like, I have no regrets. I don't know if I necessarily feel that way. I think I do regret You have things. some regrets? Yeah, for sure. I'm trying to – with my mouth open. I think I think <laughs> I'm like all, to think of stuff. I think all of these that I listed down because these are ones that are really – like I, I picked my biggest ones. I think yeah. I, re- I regret all of them. I mean I don't necessarily – I think I did and we're going to go into like what we learned from mm-hmm. that mistake. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I definitely like feel I, – I like the, the learnings that I had from them but I still I, – I definitely regret it. I'm like, oof. I, I agree. I think – I think some mistakes, depending on the post mistake effect, mm. maybe breeds a little bit more regret than others. Yes, um, true. See, I hate to say, it, but I'm like, I look back, I'm like, what did I really regret? I don't know. Maybe I'm in denial about regret. I'll have to circle back to you guys on that. Okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Sorry. Um, do you want to kick us off with your number one? Sure. Also, wait. I'm sorry. I have to say it. Renee and I could mango on the tree strawberry in the earth like renee has this beautifully aesthetic coffee cup that she drinks from all the time oh. i over here have my my mason jar yeah your mason jar but like look at mine for comparison yeah we are just so different. we're just not the same people um i feel great about my solo cup fantastic i feel it's pink it's cute though yeah it, it's just funny because every time you pick yours up, I'm embarrassed to pick mine up because I'm like, oh, she's the it girl. Brianne, and, I, and I'm not. <laughs> Why you kill me? I kill myself, really. Okay. Okay. Hit, so hit us. I, I think I did talk about this on the podcast, but did we take it down? We didn't. We were, you didn't say this on the podcast yet. Okay. Okay. But I felt like I talked about it to you recorded, you, but you I did and like, we didn't really see episode. I was like, we have to take <laughs> So. Yeah, you didn't really just have this. So this is a big moment for you right now. Okay, so my one of my biggest mistakes was getting a tattoo at eighteen. 
And then to piggyback off of that, I hid that I got a tattoo when I was 18 from my dad for 10 years. Does he know now? He knows now. So oh, okay. I'll kind of I'll kind of just dive in really quick because this, this yeah. one's a little bit longer. But so when I was 18, I got a tattoo with one of my high school best friends. You know who you are if you're listening. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we were going to a frat party at her college. And we were like, oh, my God, let's go get tattoos. Like, so fun. <laughs> Dumbasses. So we go to this you know, I can't even uh, establishment. Like I, it was truly this tattoo. Did you ever see it? Yes, did I, ever- I did see it. Okay. Cause I met you before you tried okay. to get- Yeah. So, okay. So I got this tattoo. The, the gentleman who did the tattoo didn't even use a stencil. He free handed this oh, on my God. body. God help us all. So it was like a lotus flower on my back, like in between my shoulders, like up, mm-hmm. like, and it was decently, it was, it was pre- big. It yeah, was, it was pretty big. It was decent. It was decent. It was poorly done. Poorly, poorly done. He had it deep in some spots and it was just, it was a little crooked. It was so poorly done. And again, I was freshly 18, so I could just get a tattoo. We're doing this at maybe 10 p.m. at night before we go to a frat party. I, I mean, I think about this needle and I'm like, oh, my God, like, I, like, it just was not a good situation. Anyway, so that whole thing was a r- rag rat for sure. Like, I was like, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> that was such a bad idea. One Which is was- so shocking for you. I'm sorry, but it's – I don't mean so to interrupt shocking. you. So shocking. So shocking for you. Like, like so out of character. You <laughs> so weird. Like, it was – I have a men- I was, I, menti B for sure yeah, then. <laughs> so as soon as I got it – I mean, I was living on, like, a high because I was like, oh, my God, that's so cool, whatever. I got a tattoo, and it looked terrible. Mm-hmm. It took me about, like, two weeks. Like, I remember I, like, scurried. It was, like, in the middle of the night, and I was thinking about it. I was like, why did I do that? And I, like, went into my dorm room bathroom, and I was looking at it. I was, like, you know, doing one of those things because it's my back. So I'm, like, have the mirror to hold the mirror to look at my back. And I was like, oh, my God, it's crooked. It looks so bad. Oh, my God, was it crooked? Yeah, it was crooked. Uh, it literally oh went, God. like, kind of, like, crooked on my back. It just looked – it looked terrible. Or organic. <laughs> it's like an organic growth of a lotus. It was so bad. <laughs> So, what did I, it say under it too? Didn't it say something? I, oh yeah, I, I I had it scripted. It said "Eternal Beauty." The fuck does that even mean? I just could not tell you. <laughs> what I does that mean? Tell. Okay. Anyway, so it was so I can't even express. Okay, it was bad, guys. It was. I think you're getting it. it. So it so bad. as soon as I, I – I think it took me two weeks to be like, wow, I hate this. Mm-hmm. I have no money. I'm I'm a freshman in college. And as soon as I realized, I was like, well, once I get a job and I can pay for it, I'm getting it removed. So I knew as soon as I had it, I was like, this is I'm, – I'm going to have this removed one day. So as soon as I graduated college, I got my first job at our company. Mm-hmm. I went to a tattoo removal place and I started getting it removed. And it took me years. Like five years yeah, to fully to get it removed. You can yeah. still see it a little bit. Uh, if anybody – I won't go too deep into it because I said this This one is kind of convoluted because yeah. there's a yeah. lot in it. But tattoo removal is the most painful thing I've ever gone through in my entire life. Also, the spot in which it was, it's right over my spine. So there's a lot of nerve endings there. Excruciating. Like, mm. I don't I don't wish this on my worst enemy. It was mm. so excruciating. And it took forever yeah, it to get it removed. That. The places that I went, I went to two different places because I moved. So I was getting the tattoo removal in New York. And then when I moved to Florida, I still had it and was still getting it removed. <laughs> Alex Just a would, gift that keeps on giving. Alex would go with me and I would be squeezing a stress ball. I, I would be like almost screaming. It was that bad. Anyway, the places that I went to, they told me that he did it so deep that he burned me. That's how – because my skin had scar tissue. For, anyway, so this was terrible. <sighs> my dad is just – I wouldn't say – he's definitely like against tattoos. Like he's mm-hmm. definitely very much like – just would be very disappointed in us if we got tattoos. So I hid it from him mm. because I didn't want him to see it. One, because he'd be like, that is hideous. He'd probably mm. 
pay for me to get it removed. He would literally be like, get that off your body. And two, he just, I just never really wanted to disappoint him. Mm -hmm. So it's crazy because it was only a month ago that I finally told him we were at my cousin's wedding Mm. and my sister or somebody came up to me that knew I had a tattoo before. Um, I was wearing a dress and my hair is a little bit shorter now. So I can't, you know, they could see. Yeah. And they're like, oh my God, it looks so good. Like you really can't see, like just making a comment. Oh, and my dad, no. my dad was standing right there and he was like confused. Uh. So I just told him, I was like, oh, I was like, I used to have a tattoo and I got it removed. And he was like, are you kidding me? Like he just like mm. couldn't believe it. And then we're all at breakfast the next day. And my dad was like, I just want to let you know, I was up last night thinking about the fact that you had a tattoo. And he was like, you know what? That doesn't hurt me. But he was like, what hurts me is you hid it from me for 10 years. Yeah. He was like, why did you do that? I was like, oh my God. I knew he was going to be like, bro- like just, he'd get like sad, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, wow. this is a long way to say that I, from this whole experience, I learned the hard way that permanent decisions can have really difficult consequences this was a painful consequence a i disappointed my dad consequence it was a financial consequence because i'm pretty sure the tattoo cost me 80 bucks okay the tattoo removal was i think at least 150 to 200 dollars a session and i've gotten maybe at least 10 to 20 sessions so you do the math on that (laughs) You do the math. So I just want to say, if you ever want to get a tattoo, do that thing where they put, they say, put it on your mirror and look at it every day for six months and see if you still like mm-hmm. it, you know? Mm-hmm. Never yeah, again. That's, that's a tricky one. I feel like that's probably a one Sorry, that's on that was a, a lot, lot of people, for me to- but it, it had to come out eventually. Yeah, it's, that's a tricky one. That's a tricky one. I really, it was just so. Yeah. That was a tricky one for sure. I never experienced that, but that is. And I'll have nightmares sometimes where I get a tattoo. I actually have one last night on really dead. That you got a tattoo. Yeah. And I like went to the tattoo parlor and I was like pointing to the one I wanted, just like the shape of it. And he actually tattooed the example on me and it was like all over my chest on my neck. Yeah. Yeah, it was I'll have the same. Quite terrifying. I'll have the same ones where I'll like decide to get him like, like I decided to get like a neck tat or something. Yeah, yeah like, just like something so intense, and I, and it will be like in my dream. I'm like, oh my god, like now I'm gonna have to get this removed. Like it truly scar, it scarred me literally yeah. and physically. Um. All right, my first one on my list. I hope I don't get a lot of flack for it, but whatever. College, college, just college, college, college in general. Like you totally. <clears throat> I believe in higher education. I went to school not knowing what I wanted to do. And Mm. so I spent a lot of money getting a degree that I did not use. And out of me and my three other sisters, I am the only one who does not have a certification correlated to their degree. Like Abby on Tower are both nurses. Shannon's a CPA. So, like, they needed their degrees to get that certification. I don't do public relations. I couldn't even Is tell that, you how to do public relations. That's what you did? Communicate? Yes. Okay. Communications, public relations. Okay. Um, <laughs> Why? So, I rich, you're going to die. I originally <laughs> wanted to do criminal justice because, right, you know, I remember crime, those. true and true. Um. If I could just go straight from me to, like, you know, sitting at my little desk, detective, homicide, fine. You can't do that. You know, uh, you have to be in the field. I, I I don't belong in the field of criminal justice. I can't <laughs> tackle anyone. I, I have no authority. People would laugh at me. Like, it's not for me. So I wanted to go for that. I went for public relations. I don't use my degree at all. And I cannot tell you if my degree is tied to me getting the job I have now. I I personally don't think it is. Um, I also regret or yeah, I guess regret. um, Go not even going to college specifically because I made a lot of great friends. Like it was definitely an experience. Like I paid for an experience. But I wish I also worked more in college to try to maybe make up for that deficit. Yeah, there's. Okay. I worked in admissions in college, like once or twice okay. a week, from like from like six six to nine p.m. Like she was real loose. That was like my drinking money, you know. Like I didn't 
<laughs> that was not putting a dent in the the money I owed. Um, maybe I should have tried to take up a second job just to make up the deficit a little. I think I was just very naive in that aspect and didn't understand how much things cost. And I think that is one of the mistakes I made for sure. I You need to be aware when you're spending money, a I big know. amount of money, you have to truly understand. And I don't think I did. So that for me definitely goes on my list more so for financially like a financial yes. mistake because again yeah. I made a lot of great friends I had a, a lot of great experiences you know you can't really put a price tag on experiences but I don't think it was it's worth forty five thousand dollars a year you know <laughs> no <laughs> my college was more than some people's salaries each year so hey, let me just you just said 45 times four <laughs> that's like 88 like one six almost 200 grand yeah. 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 Again, if you needed a certain certification, it makes right, sense. Right. I was just shooting the shot. You know, I don't. Yeah. So for me personally, it's hard for me to stand by my decision of college because I don't. I understand. Don't, don't contact okay. me for your public relation needs because I cannot help you. <laughs> So I guess my my what I learned from that is just to, you know, and unfortunately I can't go back, right? I can't go back to my 18 year old self and make this right. 18, man, that's what. Uh, or 17, I guess, because you're still in high school. So young, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, surprisingly, I guess I did somehow figure out that that was, I guess, what I would end up working in, but over my head. I. Yeah. I and I think that's also tricky is, and you know, I think when you learn these things also, like I will be implementing this with my children. I don't, mm -hmm. for me, I don't care what you, if you go to college or not, you just can't be mooching. You know what I mean? You have to right. get up and support yourself and support the life you want to live. And if you can do that, then, then that's amazing. You know, you do what you want to do. Um, yeah, I think it's also a life. Oh God, I hate to be too political, but I also think a lot of it is what our society in America teaches. Like, you have to do this to get this, to do this, to do this, and that's just not no. I true. know, I know, I know, I know. You know what I mean? Um, so that was that was definitely on my. I get it. My list, my list of mistakes, rag rats. <sighs> okay, so my next one is uh, ex boyfriends. Mm. Not. Uh, Okay, actually, <laughs> she's <laughs> retracting. She's changing her list. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> so what I wrote was that I gave them more time, time than necessary. And there's one in particular, you know, mm -hmm. that I feel like could have definitely just – I didn't need to give him as much time as I did, Fair. you know? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I do think – that you know relationships teach you what you do and you don't want and you know a, a lifetime partner so I can't necessarily say that like I think I was in those relationships for a reason and for a lesson but I do think you know there's also a lesson on self-worth mm -hmm. and I should have just kicked him to the curb a little bit sooner than I did. That's how I feel about that. I feel like <coughs> he's 100% not listening to this. So 100% not. <laughs> I think it's also a very tricky thing with relationships because I feel like when you are ready to make that decision, you make that decision. And I think sometimes also maybe it may play a role like you make it – you wish you made it sooner or whatever the case may be. Yeah, that that's tricky. Yeah, I was literally – I think I literally came in <laughs> to work and I was like, yeah, I just broke up with my boyfriend. Like, literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah. You were like, yeah, uh, X, Y, and Z. I'm like, okay. <laughs> just going to go back to – I thought I was on like, my laptop. Yeah, that was like this. <laughs> yeah. You were just like – went back. I was yeah, like, just very like – But that's how, you, this. that's how yeah. you know that I was so done, you yeah. know? So I yeah. could have done it a lot too. Because if you're not, I mean, I definitely was still, I don't want to say I was like super cold hearted, but I got to such a point where I was like, oh my God, I can't deal with this anymore. Like you need to be out of my life. I think we, you know, if it's not going to be your lifetime person and whatever, like you kind of just need to cut that out a little bit. Okay. I, I, sh I should have cut it out sooner because it was just, it was not good for me. And 
um, you know, not not necessarily good for him either, I guess. So anyway, I just kind of feel like that was a mistake. I think everyone definitely has something strung, like, yeah. Some, strung him some... along for a little bit too long. Well, you, you broke that. So here we are now. Thank you. Hooey, high school drama. High school drama, high school drama. Interesting. <laughs> high school's a really weird time. Mm. High school, you know. Renee one day was singing in her room by herself. The next day she was coming to high school in stiletto. So there's a lot that happens in high lie. school. I don't know. We, we we should talk about that off log. So I still don't really fully understand what happened there. But it's all right. Um, and more so when I mean high school drama, I mean trying to rekindle relation, like friendship relationships that were just supposed to end. And mm. I think sometimes – you know, I still have two of my best friends that I went to high school with and even in middle school with, and they're my best friends for like, what, 20 years or whatever it is now. Um, we were friends with one person. We had a falling out. And then after that falling out, after we graduated high school, we tried to still see her every once in a while. And looking back now, it just was kind of a waste of time because, you know, people who are meant to be in your life friendship wise, it just will work out and I just think we spent a lot of time not even just myself my other friend too trying to rekindle that relationship when looking back I just don't really remember having any value in that relationship so I wish I kind of told myself in that moment save your energy for people friendships girlfriends that you really need yeah and I know that sometimes rela- like friendship relationships, there'll be a falling out and you come back together, right? But do mm-hmm. you ever come back together fully like you were before? No. I think relationships are always a little bit different once they circle back around. I mean, I definitely had – I had like friend falling outs mm-hmm. throughout my life for sure. I think that's just – that's like part of growing up and, you know – going into high school and college and then you know if you get married like there's these different life things that happen that sometimes friends either stay around or you know you just kind of grow apart in a way yeah it's not always like that something blew up you know right but yeah friendship breakups they're tricky and it's weird and you know when you have these really close friends or just friends in general it's you tell them things about your it's it's weird it's yeah. it's different than a an intimate breakup it's it's it was wild because when i graduated high school i remember but i had like a core group of friends that i was friends with since i was 8 years old like mm-hmm. we've been friends forever we've been through everything together and it was almost like when we graduated high school like we all we were like bawling our eyes out. Like we knew that that was like that chapter had closed and that now like this new chapter, I mean, we still, again, one of them, we went to a frat party and got a tattoo with her. So we still were friends and like had a connection. But as we went through college and we all went to college in different States and areas and stuff like that, like things changed. Yeah. Um, and it was super, it was so hard. Like I, I mean, we just, I think we all kind of subconsciously knew without saying it to each other that, like oh okay like that that chapter of our lives is now it's closed you know yeah. it's crazy yeah. everyone goes through that too I think you and you don't even just I I wrote high school because that's originally what came to my mind but it doesn't just have to be in high school it can be any, right. at any point in time um and I honestly I just think the biggest lesson for that is accepting where it is accepting that things may change accepting that sometimes they the pieces won't fall back together in terms of those friendships and yeah you just have to kind of be okay with that you know it's not a reflection on you it's just not everyone you meet is going to stay in your life friendship wise for that extended period of time there's no way you can't you can't harvest a five million friendships no it it gets and it gets harder like as you yeah as you get older, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So my next one, I guess, similar to your college, but mine, I, I guess I don't necessarily regret or find like my first college experience as a mistake, but I decided, <laughs> and I think I've definitely talked about this in the podcast, <sighs> but I decided to get my master's for one semester 
And what was it again? Remind us. So I went to a online school to start a um, interior design master's program. I think it was called like interior design and architecture or something like that. And I, I did this when, so I was working at the company that I'm working at now. It was my first job and I had to quit because I was living in New York at the time and I moved to Florida and mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. There's nothing to do in Florida that like where I was moving in Florida, there was no fashion companies. Like it was just, it was like retirement central. Like Desolate. now, <laughs> now living in Miami, like I could have definitely, you know, found a new job easier, but I just kind of was a little bit lost and I didn't know what to do with my life. And I was obviously really excited because I was moving down here because at that point, like I did know, I was like, I'm going to marry Alex. Like I knew that he was like my person. So I I was like making a huge sacrifice to move down here to be with him and with his career. Like he was just not in a place to be able to move out of Florida. So I just felt really lost and I did not know what to do with my life. And I've always really loved interior design. So I thought, okay, maybe I'll go back to school and I'll, I'll get a degree in interior design. Um, <laughs> yeah. How was that I, degree? I don't have it. Okay. And it's because I, so I, I don't, did I finish the first semester? I think you did. I think I did. Yeah. Barely because it was a <laughs> lot harder than I thought it was going to be. I was like, architecture is math. I was like, oh, I'm not good at this. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of realized, I was like, well, I think I have an interest in it, but just because you have an interest in something doesn't necessarily mean you need to go spend thousands of dollars on, on education for it. I could have just dipped my toes into it. By maybe, you know, getting a a part time internship somewhere down in in Naples or Fort Myers, like I could have, you know, picked up like just working as a receptionist at some sort of interior design firm. Like I didn't have to go into school to do it and to learn about something. I think we kind of just think that that's like an obvious first step and gives you like purpose and and finding, you know, your career path. But it was a huge mistake. It was a huge, it was my biggest, um, it's my biggest like financial mistake that I've made like thus far as an adult. And, you know, I feel like I can't necessarily, I mean, I don't want to say I can't complain, but you know, it's not like the, I could have made a lot worse financial decisions, but it's still, I mean, it's a lot of money and I have to pay for it. And it's, I'm paying for something that I'm not even using and I won't use and I don't have anything to show for it. So it hurts. It burns. It stings. Um, I definitely learned like the hard way that, you know, just because again, that I felt like that was something that I wanted to do. I probably just didn't really look into the truth in it. And then once I started mm-hmm. like, be like, okay, like I'm going to spend, I think it was 20 grand a semester. And I was like, it's a okay. lot. It's yeah, a lot. Um, so maybe what that's 40 grand a, a year. year. Yeah. So if I went through the whole thing, I would be in a similar situation with me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I decided, I mean, I will say that out of that situation, I'm really proud of myself for deciding after the first semester was done and I did some research and I was like, okay, like I, if I get a job in interior design, like I, just from what I saw, I was like, I don't really know where this is going to even leave me and I'm not having fun with it. And I don't <laughs> really have the interest that I thought I was going to. Yeah. And instead of being like, okay, I'm just going to push through and do it. I was like, you know what? No, I think. I did the semester. I saw what I, like, I learned what I learned and it's unfortunately not going to be for me. And I took the L and I was just like, it was one of those times where I knew that I just needed to quit because I felt like I would have been even more upset if I went through the entire thing and was far more in the hole than I was going to be. And then for what, you know, and I was, I was thinking about Alex too. I was like, I don't want to like we had already been talking about marriage at that point. And I was like, well, like my debt is his debt. 
And am mm-hmm. I going to want him to – like, is this what I really want, you know? And it just really made me think about, okay, this is just – this is not it. Like, and I just decided – I remember I was, like, sitting on the floor – in our apartment. I don't know why I always go I always get myself down. Uh, ground to the floor. yourself ground yourself in the earth. Is what and I you was do. just like sitting there and I was just thinking about it and I was like, Yeah, I gotta I have to drop out. I need to drop out. This is not I just knew it, like I felt it in my soul. And I think it's like one of those times where you knew feel something in your gut so strong you have to listen to it. And I just felt it in my gut. I was like, This is not gonna be for me. This is not it. This is I need to just end it here. And yeah. And I did. So I, I definitely learned a lot from that but I I do I am still like proud of myself for being like you know what like it was an L and we're just gonna move on yeah so yeah I remember you were like yeah I'm not doing that anymore I was like okay (laughs) I was kind of quiet about it um just because I was a little I was definitely like I was ashamed you know you don't ever really want to be like quitting definitely has a really negative connotation and I just agreed I didn't really want to come I didn't want to come out and be like, you know, I quit because it didn't make me feel good either. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like I just, I needed time to like process like my decision. I knew it was the right decision, but you know, when you make a decision, you don't necessarily always want to go to people right away because you need to like truly feel comfortable in your decision first before you start gaining a lot of opinions from others. Not that I felt like you or anybody else was going to be like, oh, like don't do that. No, but I just wanted to be feel really solid in my choice, so that when I did say something to other people, it was kind of like, okay, like that's what she decided to do, and she's not going to do it, you know? Yeah. Well, because anytime you you make a decision, that's maybe not what people expect or whatever. Everyone's always going to have an opinion about the decisions you make, and I know we mentioned it, you know, in, in a few weeks ago, this episode about authenticity, but. You got to you got to be 100% with your decisions. You can't even be 99%. You got to be 100% because when that storm hits you, even if it's unintentional or they mean well, you, you got to be okay with your decisions. Yeah. So That's I definitely, it. I mean, I just kind of needed to like process. I, I remember I felt really defeated and I also felt super lost. I mean, I was working at this. I was working at the same time that I was doing this master's program. I was doing the master's program on the weekend and after and before and after I went to work. So I was waking up at like 4 a.m. to do a class. And then I was working when I got home. For, it was so much. It was yeah. so much work. And I was like, for what? Like, why am I doing this? And I hated the job that I was working at. It was just a really tough, tough time. Um, I definitely look back at that time and I'm like, wow, like I just felt super lost I mean it's really hard moving in with a significant other like for the first year so it was just a really intense year um and it definitely was really hard on me but anyway that's a whole nother a whole nother story but I just that's just definitely one of my biggest yeah biggest ones doesn't sting any less doesn't sting any less no it really doesn't not advocating for myself at work Mm. and this, I guess, is maybe an ongoing thing. Okay. Um, and I know it also ties into something that you have listed. There is a huge stigma about how you advocate for yourself, whether it's you're in the job, you're advocating for yourself for a different X, Y, and Z. You're about to start a job. You're advocating for yourself for this you know, hiring manager that knows nothing about you. I don't know if it's a female thing. I don't know mm. if it's a human thing. I actually think I saw a statistic where it was that women don't advocate for themselves as much as men. Maybe it's just because the way our our brains are wired, we think a little bit more about it. Advocate for yourself. And there's a way to do it in which you're not coming off aggressive or not even aggressive, but bitchy you know what i mean there's a way to do it Ugh, it's, but I always that that's a double standard though. i know it is because like guys will just say it and it, it is it but I and it like comes off I... like affirmative and you know that they're just yeah being so but i don't know it comes off totally different it, it's yeah. so i hate it i hate because the double even standard. now at work there's mm-hmm. one of my coworkers, um not renee there's a different coworker <laughs> that always says like you're too emotional you're too emotional about this and i'm like but am i Am I being emotional or I'm just saying you guys are making a decision that I know based on history is not going to go over well. And if my tone you're taking as emotional is just fierce, 
I'm not com- I'm not emo- I'm not crying. I'm not being emotional. I'm I'm yeah. giving you the facts as it is. So I think advocating for yourself. Oh. I know, I know. I'm oh. sweating. I know. The it fact that think s- he's calling me emotional, I'm like, I am no. not being emotional. I'm not being emotional at work. I'm literally telling you a fact. If you don't like the fact, that's a you problem. I'm telling you based on the history I know and how long I've been in this position, that is not gonna, going to go over well. And if you don't like that, that's a you problem. But it's not me being emotional. I'm coming to the table with facts. Anyway. Okay. Oh, see, I'm getting heated already. Advocate for yourself. And... You know, sometimes if there's, I'm just going to say a job that you want, a position you want, and you're pushing for it, you're pushing for it, and you don't get it, don't be defeated. Don't, you know, I I think the work stuff is very tricky. Just advocate for yourself. And that's something that I wish I did when I first started back at our company now. When I first, first started, I definitely could have advocated for myself more. But you live and you learn. And it doesn't get, honestly, it doesn't get easier as you move up or have longevity doesn't make it easier it actually probably gives it more power but that's something i definitely wish i did starting off a little bit better yeah no i agree with you because i know this also ties into your yeah point mine um i've only negotiated a salary once in my life and i it's a huge mistake to not even like i just feel like i've left thousands of dollars on the table of uh, just for not asking the question when because when I did negotiate it, it was not at the current job that I'm at oh, it was that the job previous to this and I negotiated and I got more <laughs> like, yeah and I I don't know why I felt the reason not neg- to negotiate for this the new job that I'm at I should have um, I think you could have, but and I'm not. And every time now, I am going to negotiate for more. Yeah, just hands down. I just feel like you know you need to value yourself as an employee, and you don't want to leave. I just don't want to leave anything out on the table. Like, and there's a point of being fair and reasonable with your negotiation. Agreed. And I don't think you know asking for just a little bit more it doesn't have to be you know thousands and tens of thousand dollars more or something super unrealistic but if you do a little bit of research and you're asking for something very reasonable you know and the worst thing that they can say is no and that's that's how I went into it with my other one I just negotiated and she was like you know I can't do this but I can do this and it was still more Mm -hmm. than I had thought so um yeah I just really regret kind of not negotiating and just kind of again it 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 just like sits weird it makes me feel weird in my I don't know how to explain it It kind of makes me feel like this I don't have this sense of power within myself like I don't have this this voice that I'm like not I'm just like oh okay I just like it's fine I'll just take it yeah like no you know like have a little bit more and I think it like you know it's interesting that you bring up the female thing like I do think we kind of just we take what we were given and given. Saying, I'm not saying all women do that because I know that's not true, but I do think, you know, at least for me, like being a younger woman in the industry in the business industry, like I've kind of just been like, okay, like that's what they say. So that's what I take. Mm-hmm. Like there no. is normally always more. Yeah. So now that I have someone reporting into me, technically, I mean, I don't know how it works with all companies, but you know, normally there's a bucket of money, right? There's a mm-hmm. bucket of money that you hire this person in at. So I'm just going to use very basic numbers, like ten thousand to twenty thousand. So they come in, they offer you sixteen thousand. They probably they have the full twenty thousand dollar bucket, so they can definitely offer you that. But what I think is so critical that Renee just said is research, because you also don't want to come to the table where it's like triple what they're asking because then you're just gonna look silly I don't want to say dumb but I'm gonna say silly you're gonna look silly if you come to the table with you just want to kind of outlandish yeah like just say like you know I was doing some research you know some market industry research and I saw x position was making this range like I'd love to be closer to this range because of x y and z skill you have you know and that's all you have to say it's just two to three sentences when I did it the first time like the first time the first and only time I did it I wrote down like a two to three sentence and I just had the lady on speakerphone and I said my sentence verbatim and I obviously (laughs) made it seem like I wasn't reading. Yeah. 
and it, it you know obviously I was so nervous like my heart was beating out of my chest for what yeah. reason I don't know but you know I just I just said it and you know I just I just really I just I kind of don't like that I didn't do it with this job that I'm in now I really feel like I just kind of took what I got and I'm very grateful for it and I'm very grateful for the opportunity and um I'm very happy with, you know, the situation that I got myself in. But again, I just feel like I left some of my worth on the table there. Even if it wasn't, even if I didn't get it, you know, it's just yeah. still putting yourself, telling your com and who you're working for, like, hey, this is how I value myself. Like, and I just, I don't want you to think that I don't have value in the work that I'm going to do. I think it shows a lot of like, you know, like I want to do a good job. And I think mm -hmm. if, you know, this is what I feel like I deserve. Like, I think it shows like a really, it's very admirable almost. Yeah. Um, If you do it the right way. So I just, I kind of regret, I definitely regret that. So yeah, I think, think it also, was a mistake. Agreed. I think it's just one. Was, I don't Ugh. know why, but one that mistake is like one that could just always keep happening if you're not really paying attention to it. Yeah, it doesn't get easier, like Renee said. But um, yeah, that that I don't, I don't really like that one. Yeah, I, it I, makes I don't me like feel. That one. I don't know. It just makes me feel bad. I'm I like, don't like. Ugh, I just work stuff is so unfun. <laughs> Yeah, we definitely need to do like an updated a full episode. Yeah, I think yeah. I was just about to say that. Like an updated work. I think a, a good topic and if anybody wants to let us know if you have interest in this, but I do think like just talking about being a woman in like the in, the in workforce. In, in the workforce, <laughs> you know, because it just brings yeah. up so many things and even now just I don't want to go so off topic, but it's just something that it's definitely been like weighing in my heart heavy recently, just about yeah. work in general. So many different things ab about it. Um, I think it would be a good, a good combo. So I think we could definitely. We'll add it to the list of our stuff. Yeah. We've got a long list. So we do have a long list. We have, we have a long list of um, topics, but we also, I mean, I actually think for us being so early into our lives, our list of rag rats and mistakes isn't as terrible as it could be. I'm sure if I really wanted to deep dive, I could find some petty things to add in there. But I think bottom line is everyone makes mistakes, right? You make mistakes. Some you can come, you know, some you bounce back from quicker than others. Yeah. I think for me, the biggest, the biggest lesson I've learned in your mistakes, my mistakes is owning it's a mistake. You learn from it and you move on from it. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, I think making mistakes is like a really big lesson on accountability you know you truly huge learn. you're like oh wow okay like this is a moment that i need to reflect and take accountability for the actions that i did mm -hmm. because i got myself into that that situation whatever it may be and you know this at least from what you know the the details that we were listing like those are things that we decided to do you know maybe in the moment we thought it was a good idea or whatever and then when you look back you're like Ugh probably was not the best you know agreed so but it's okay it's okay it's all good we're it's you know, all gonna be good mistakes are a way to grow and learn so mm -hmm. it's it's just a natural form of life we're all out here making them and we're definitely gonna have more so should we end on a quote yes please okay <clears throat> oh what we find is that if you have a goal that is very very far out and you approach it in little steps you start to get there faster your mind opens up to the possibilities 100 percent. not really fully related to today's topic but that's all right can i can i piggyback off of, of that? course you can thanks of course you can sure. so i started doing something in my journal that i want to recommend to those okay. that i heard on a on the mill robbins podcast mm-hmm so she says to write down five dreams every day, five dreams that you have. And it could be as crazy of a dream as possible because the dream is just the destination and you could end up anywhere on that path to that dream. But if you're not shooting as high as you possibly can, then you could just be missing out on all the different steps to that pinnacle dream. You know what I mean? So it could be mm -hmm. like, if I wanted to be like, you know, I completed an Ironman, you know, like that's, that's a dream, right? But I could end up just somewhere on that spectrum. You know, if you cap your dreams, then you're going to cap all the other steps to that journey. 
You know what I mean? Agreed. So yeah. just, you know, you got to shoot for the stars. Shoot for the stars, And there will friends. be mistakes. There will be there mistakes. Will, yes. In between those little steps for sure. Yeah, 100%. So. Um, that's fantastic. I anyway. love that. On that note, yeah. friends, we hope you have a great week, a great day, and shoot for those stars. But don't oh. be afraid of your mistakes. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Thank great you. Great way to tie it up into a bow. <laughs> love that. Bye, guys. Bye. It's almost an hour. I know. Right on the dot. I'm going to end it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm yeah, let's pee. pee and then we'll just come right back. Wait, so maybe I'll do like women um 